Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good morning, beloved in Christ. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in Him. Today, Sunday, 12th of March, 2023, the third Sunday in Lent, our meditation on Daily Fountain is taken from the book of Luke, chapter 9 from verse 18 to 27. Luke chapter 9, 18 to 27. Our topic for meditation today is following after Jesus. Following after Jesus. Read with me. Luke 9, 18 to 27. And it came to pass as he was alone praying, his disciples were with him and he asked them saying, whom say the people that I am? They answering said, John the Baptist. But some say, Elias. Others say, that one of the whole prophet is risen again. He said unto them, but whom say ye that I am? Peter answering said, the Christ of God. And he straightly charged them and commanded them to tell no man that thing, saying, the Son of Man must suffer many things, and be rejected of the elders, and the chief priests, and scribes, and be slain, and be raised the third day. And he said to them all, If any man will come after him, let him deny himself, and take up his cross daily, and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what is a man's advantage if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he shall come in his own glory and in his fathers and of the holy angel. But I tell you of a truth, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the kingdom of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we want to thank you for today. Thank you for this beautiful day you have given unto us. We rejoice and we celebrate your faithfulness. Even as we go into the world of life, we pray that the Holy Spirit will minister to our heart. The word of God will do us wonders in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father, because the light of your word will shine upon our heart. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. From the scripture reading, we saw from verse 18 that Jesus went alone praying. And he asked the disciples, who do people say I am? Then they said, Jesus asked them, they said, you are John the Baptist. Some said you are the old prophet. Then Jesus asked them again, who said, who do you think I am? Who do you say I am? Personally. What is the revelation of myself in your life? Who do you say I am? Peter answered, said, Christ of God. The question to us this morning is, who is Jesus unto us? Who is Jesus to you? Do you know him as your personal Lord and Savior? Has Jesus been revealed unto you as the Messiah, as your Savior and the Savior of the world? Who is Jesus unto us? Jesus was asking them that, who do you think I am to you? He's not moved about what they said about the whole people, that what the people say I am. He's not moved about that. He's talking to them. He now come to them the second time. He said, who do you say I am? Jesus was very personal. I don't want her to be lost in the crowd. The race that we are running is a personal race. Today is the day of salvation. If you can come to the feet of the Lord, we come to the cross. The Bible says anyone that come to him, in no wise he will not cast away. Who is Jesus unto you? Have you accepted Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior? Is he the Messiah of your life? Is God the Christ unto you? 
Peter answered, he said, you are Christ of God. Is Jesus revealed to you as God has revealed him even to Peter? I pray that God will help us this morning to take a step further, to answer as he stay at the door. The Bible says, I stand at the door, Revelation 3.20. He said, I knock. Anyone that opens, he enter. This morning, Jesus is knocking. Will you allow him to enter so that he will be your personal Lord and Savior? If you want to give your life to Jesus, I invite you to pray with me. Jesus, I pray this morning that you come into my life. I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. I want you to be the Lord of my life so that I can follow after in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father. Thank you for the precious blood of Jesus that cleanses. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank God that we have accepted him. Praise the Lord. Everyone is rejoicing and we glorify God in Jesus' name. The word follow means to accept and go after a path prescribed by another. Today's passage shows the condition for following Jesus. The first condition is to go beyond people's understanding of Jesus. What the people say, the general knowledge of Jesus. The word is to know him personally as revealed by God in John 6, 44. This personal revelation of Jesus will lead you to open your heart and invite him to become your personal Lord and master. Thank God that we have done that. We have accepted him. We have invited him to be the personal Lord and master of our life. Following after Jesus also means living daily like him in words and deed. We sell the topic for today is following after Jesus. And we said before we can follow him, we have to know him. Thank God we have known him. We have accepted him. We said following after him. It's not just something that you do today and tomorrow you are not doing it. The Bible says anyone that put his hand on the plow and look at back is not fit for the kingdom. Once we put our hands on the plow, it's a daily encounter. We have to follow him daily. And following him must be in words and in deed. What we say, our action, the way we behave. Even at home, in our working place, where we sell things, anywhere we are that Christ might be seen in us. It also entails constant private communion with him, even in the public, as depicted by Jesus. It entails constant private communion with him. Following Jesus, it entails private communion. When we look at that scripture that we read in verse 18, it talks about Jesus going to a place to pray. That is what we are saying. It involves having a personal relationship. I can call, we call it quiet time. Do you have your quiet time? Do you pray in the morning? Do you study the word? Do you allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you and to lead you in the journey of life daily? Without that, it will be difficult to follow Jesus in words and in our deed. If we want to follow after Jesus, we must have a constant private communion with him. That makes the journey of following him to be very easy. When we do that, we draw strength from him daily and we receive grace to move on on our daily activity. I pray that God will help us in Jesus' name. It also entails self-denial and decision to take up your cross daily. Following Jesus is not that I know him yesterday and the knowledge of yesterday is what will take me tomorrow. No, it's a daily walk. We must daily follow after him. This can be summed up as cleaving and confirming wholly to his lifestyle even to the point of sacrificing your will, your possession, our time, our interest, even our life for him. If we want to follow after Jesus, we must be ready to give her everything that we have, our time, our interest, our possession. Everything is to be given to him. He is to be Lord over it. He is to be in control of it. You may never experience the in-depth power of God until you have decided to live a life of self-denial for Christ. 
This means that the word of God becomes the final authority in all facets of our life, even if it is not convenient. Whether it is convenient, Bible says in tribulation, in trouble, anywhere I will follow Jesus. Even if it is not convenient, seemingly unprofitable, contrary to our feeling, to our culture, to education, to our will, to the popular opinion experience. This requires being helped by the grace of God. I want to say this, that even as we have said that following Jesus involves denial, is a sacrificial life. We have to give up so many things. Some of us, we have to go to places to sacrifice for Jesus. If we look at the life of Mary Magdalene as mother, they were people that were able to minister to Jesus even with their substances, with their possession, with their time. They waited on him, they followed him. They were not following him from afar. They were following him closely, denying themselves of things. I pray that God will help us. But in following Jesus, I want to say this, it takes the grace of God. We cannot do it of our strength. Bible say, by strength shall no man prevail. But thank God for Jesus that has come and told us that my grace is sufficient for you. I just want us to come this morning and receive grace. The grace to follow is available. He said, my grace is sufficient for you. Following Jesus requires being held by the grace of God. To follow Jesus entail a cause, but will launch you into the real power and glory of God. Following Jesus requires a cost. It requires us to do something to take some steps. But I know that with the grace of God released over our life, we will be able to follow him. No matter the situation, no matter the culture, no matter our education, no matter our possession, the Bible says, what, what shall be the gain if we gain the whole world? and lose our soul. With what will we make an exchange of it? I pray that God will help us. He will grant us much grace to follow him, even as we make up our mind to follow Jesus. His grace is sufficient for us. His grace is sufficient for us. Will you follow him? My brothers, my beloved in Christ, will you follow Jesus? Since the grace is available, since the grace of God is sufficient, since the Holy Spirit is there to lead us to follow him, will you follow him? I invite us to come. Let's receive grace. The Bible says we should come boldly to the throne of grace and let us obtain mercy in time of need. We need the grace of God in a time like this to follow him. Let's ask of him the grace to follow him. And I know that God will grant it unto us in Jesus' name. The Bible says anyone that call upon him, in no way will he cast away. When we call upon the Lord, he will always answer us. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we pray that you will reveal Jesus to us and in us and give us the grace to follow duly. We pray that you will help us in our thoughts, in our words, in our deed to live a life of Jesus and to follow you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.